Hey, it's Steve. This is just a quick video showing some comparisons between different gain and shutter speed settings when doing some imaging of Jupiter. So right now I'm using a Celestron 8-inch Edge HD telescope with an ASI 224MC camera uh, to do my planetary imaging. And so I wanted to compare different settings of gain and uh, shutter speed because you have some trade-offs with both of those. So I did four 90-second captures with different settings. Uh, and I was capturing everything using the ASI capture software on a 12-inch MacBook. And the seeing was not great with this. It was pretty average and actually got worse with time. But all the captures were pretty close together, one right after the other. So this thing was fairly comparable for all four captures. And I stacked exactly 40% of the frames in all four captures. But the number of frames in that stack obviously was variable depending on the number of frames that were captured based on the shutter speed. So I did 5, 10, 20, and 30 millisecond shutter speeds. And I adjusted the gain in each case to keep the histogram at right around 80% for the green channel. And so now obviously if you have a faster shutter speed, you can get more frames. But because you turn the gain up higher, you do get more noise in each frame with a faster shutter speed. Uh, the slower shutter speeds give you less noise, but they also can blur details more. So here you can see the raw data from all four cases with the 5, 10, 20, and 30 millisecond shutter speeds. Uh, you can see right off the bat that the 5 millisecond one does give you a lot more noise in the raw data. And you can see certainly as the shutter speed increased, number of frames I captured decreased from 8,500 at five milliseconds down to 29,29 when I use a 30 millisecond shutter speed. And so when I processed all of this in auto stackered, again, stacking 40% of the frames and then doing wavelet sharpening with the exact same settings in all four cases and registax, here is the final result from all four of those cases. I didn't do any further sharpening or, or adjustments in any photo software. This is exactly how it came out of registax. And this is a little bit sharpened too much, especially you can see there's a lot of artifacts around the shadows of Io and Ganymede, but you can uh, certainly see that given the data that I have here, the five millisecond time was far and away the most noisy of the four images, whereas the 30 millisecond one had the opposite problem of having certain things blurred out, especially the moon. Ganymede is really blurred out with that 30 millisecond shutter speed. And so really the 10 and 20 millisecond ones kind of give you the best sort of optimal you know, outcome uh, in between the five and the 30. So you know, somewhere in that range tends to produce the best results based on this Ganymede looks pretty crisp. And you can see comparable levels of detail on the planet in both of those cases. So probably depending on the seeing, you know, if seeing is worse, you probably wanna go with a shorter shutter speed. And if it's very good, you might be able to go to a 20 millisecond shutter speed so you don't have as much gain and a little bit less noise in the image, imagery data. On the other hand, if the atmosphere is very steady, you can also stack more frames or a higher percentage of frames, which kind of offsets the problem of the shorter shutter speed as well in terms of having you know more grain show up in the final image. So anyway, that's just a quick comparison of these four different uh, settings here. Again, the five millisecond one seemed to produce too much noise. 30 millisecond one blurred everything too much. So again, 20, 10 to 20 milliseconds seems to be the optimal range. And typically I do about 10 millisecond shutter speeds and that gain setting of around 280 when I do my Jupiter captures. So anyway, uh, perhaps it helped you out a little bit, but uh, that's all for now and thanks for watching. Bye.